to my channel. My name is Iran Marie, and today we'll be talking about how I was diagnosed with lupus. Before we get into that, I would like to ask you to please subscribe if you haven't already, and to please don't forget to like, comment, and share. If you're watching this video, I assume it's because you either have lupus yourself or you know have a loved one that has lupus. And my intention for making this video is to really just share my journey and how you know I figured out that I had lupus. It can be a very difficult you know realization to come to, and I wanted to empower other people to go to the doctor if they are experiencing the same thing and you know get a diagnosis. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. I have my notes right here. This is actually from Auntie Tab's collection, her journal of three from Target. This was only $5. Look at me trying to influence, girl. This is not what this is about. But I have my notes just so I can kind of like make sure that I'm talking about everything I want to talk about and I don't, you know, miss anything. So first to start off, what is lupus? So lupus is an autoimmune disease where your body actually attacks its own tissues. So your body confuses your own tissues for being like bad players. So it can attack your liver, your kidney, your skin, basically your organs. So now that we're on the same page and we all know what lupus is, I just wanna dive into my story and how I found out I had lupus. So in 2018, it was a very interesting summer for me because I was just having a lot of things going on. And also during this time, I was trying to kind of like better myself. I wanted to, you know, work out and just be out in nature because I realized that I'm a person who really thrives in nature. So I told myself I wanted to start hiking. So I bought hiking shoes, I bought a low top pair, I bought a high top pair, I made sure I had the correct clothes, you know, all the accessories, the hats, the long sleeve shirts that are ventilated, I had everything I needed to go hiking. And my partner at the time, he, you know, obviously wanted to go hiking with me, uh, well not obviously, because some of these partners are trash but this partner wanted to go hiking with me so the first tra trail that we went hiking on he actually chose it and it was a trail that you know supposedly he had been on before and he was familiar with so when we first started out on the trail you know it was a regular regular hike it was nothing special or anything towards the end it did get a bit difficult to the point where i felt like my body was overheating like i felt so hot like i was hot to the touch i felt dizzy i felt like i was going to pass out and i mean i was obviously concerned but i didn't really think too much of it because i was on a hike and I hadn't been working out much prior to this, so I was just like, this is a lot for my body. But you know, I didn't think that this was gonna be a long-term thing, right? I didn't touch any of the greenery out there because you know, I know there's things like poison ivy that you can have an allergic reaction to. So I didn't do any of those things. So luckily, I made it through the hike <laughs> with a lot of breaks in water, but I did make it through. And when I got home that night, I was assuming I was going to have a good night's sleep because girl, I just did like over a two mile hike where I almost, you know, passed out. So I get home and I, I remember this vividly. I, I think I talked to my best friend that night and I was so surprised because I'm like, I'm surprised I'm not tired. And like, I just felt so awake, like I couldn't even go to sleep, right? I'm just laying in my bed, trying to go to sleep, trying to figure out why am I not tired from this long day I just had. So eventually, the palms of my hands start to burn. And I'm not talking about a, a lingering burn, like they were burning, burning to the point where I was looking for medicine to take, but it was such a weird sensation. I didn't really know what to do, right? So I already couldn't fall asleep. Now my hands are burning. I really can't fall asleep. So I'm just laying in my bed trying to figure out why my hands are burning. Fast forward a couple hours later, and I've developed these hives. I'm gonna insert pictures because me explaining it does not do it justice because I don't even think they're hives. They were so big and massive. It was like hives were like coming together and making bigger hives. 
my body was red you know you see me baby i'm chocolate i was red and i was in so much pain like it hurt to move my body so i had <laughs> hives truly everywhere my lips were swollen my face was swollen everything was swollen so i took benadryl because i'm assuming it's an allergic reaction right and the benadryl was not helping the benadryl was getting me tired so i was able to fall asleep for like you know an hour or two at a time but it was not doing anything for the hives so the next day this uh happened on a weekend so the next day i went to the urgent care and urgent care did some tests to see if you know i had come in contact with poison ivy i did not but they didn't know you know what had caused the hives they ended up prescribing me some steroids the steroids definitely helped with the pain but i was definitely out of commission for maybe three or four days it was very scary very uncomfortable and nothing i had ever seen my body do right so after that i was kind of scared of hiking because i'm like what's wrong with me <laughs> like it wasn't like yeah it was strenuous strenuous it was strenuous but you know i don't feel like i should be breaking out in hives over a hike so i was scared so i feel like i just bought all this hiking stuff for no reason and still i really haven't went back hiking since then and this was 2018 so i'm clearly traumatized so like i said that was an interesting summer for me so after that i noticed that when i would go out in the sun for long periods of time and not even really long periods of time but like any time maybe over 30 minutes or an hour i would develop this rash on my face like this raised inflamed rash and it would kind of hurt too and this was something i had never experienced before i do have eczema so i you know i have sensitive skin but you know typically for my face i'm not getting a rash like in the same place and noticeably after i've been out in the elements so i'm like what's going on so i started doing my own research and you know i start to see things and you know at this point i'm aware that my grandmother my maternal grandmother passed away to lupus and i see that you know people who have lupus tend to present this rash on their face and i'm like hmm that's that's interesting but you know i'm like i don't i'm not gonna put that on me i don't want to claim that energy but let's go to the doctor and also around this time i noticed that i'm really tired like there's days where i'm so tired i cannot get out my bed and i am so weak sometimes that i'm literally walking around like i need help walking like i'm walking so slow and i need support standing up or it looks like i'm going to fall over right and this is not from doing a lot of activity it's literally like i just wake up one day and feel that way or I wake up and then towards the middle of the day, it's like, baby, I'm done. I need to go lay down. So again, a very weird summer. But I went to the doctor mainly because of this rash on my face. A little, <laughs> a little superficial, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all. At the time, I had Medi-Cal. And you know, I feel like any insurance is better than no insurance. But I will say, with my experience on Medi-Cal, I felt like a lot of the providers that I went to did not care about me. They did not listen to my problems. They were just trying to, you know, write me off. You know, in and out, just another number, just another patient, whatever. So my provider at the time, I went to her and I'm like, yo, I keep getting this rash on my face. I don't know what's going on, but it's something. Very much something. You know what I mean? And she looks at it and she's like, okay, I think that's contact dermatitis. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> What's that? And she's like, well, you know, when you touch your face and your hands aren't clean, you know, it can cause you to get a rash. And I'm like, baby, I don't touch my face. I have a, a skincare routine that I abide by every day. I'm not just willy-nilly touching my face. I'm not a child. I'm like, that's not it. This is not contact dermatitis, right? Like, what are you talking about? And I was, like, I was, um, what's the word? I was uh, offended because you're basically telling me that I have, like, unclean practices and I'm making myself have this rash, like, 
girl I think I know not to touch my face throughout the day you know what I mean I know that so I'm like no I don't think so so she calls in this other provider to kind of get like a second opinion and this woman looks at it and she's like I don't think that's contact dermatitis and I'm like mm-hmm me neither and she was like I think you should order you know some blood tests and she you know tells her what blood test she should order or whatever and I'm like all right we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere okay so tests were ordered I went and got my blood done I'm waiting on the results <laughs> I'm waiting 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 I think I waited at least two weeks possibly three for my results right and then finally I get this call not from my provider but I believe from a nurse in the, the office and she's like so we got your results back uh, don't freak out but you are a and a positive that could possibly mean that you have lupus and I said huh just I can't say anything else I can't answer any of your questions try to call and make an appointment with your provider and she'll be able to help you out whatever I'm freaking out okay <laughs> because I'm like the thing that I thought it was in the back of my head it, it sounds like that's what it is okay I'm getting confirmation that it's kind of what I thought it was so I'm just like okay so I'm trying to get an appointment with my provider no luck right no luck she's out of office she's on vacation I probably had to wait a month to go in to see my provider so I'm literally just have this information and I'm just freaking out right because I find out that I may have this disorder I don't know how long I've had this disorder I don't know what it's already done to my body like and I've been a sickly person I hate to say sickly but I am prone to getting sick and when I do get sick it's usually on the extreme level so I'm just like this is probably why because I have lupus, girl. So my mind is doing all the stuff it probably should not be doing right. So I finally get in to see my provider. And you would think she would apologize for trying to tell me I had contact dermatitis when I do not. <laughs> it's much bigger than that. But she didn't. Uh, she gave me a recommendation to a rheumatologist, which, you know, is what she should have done. Or giving the recommendation she did not confirm or deny if I had lupus she basically was like it's a possibility uh, you are in a positive which is one of the indicators of if you have lupus or not so I made an appointment with the rheumatologist and I went she did an initial like overview of my uh, limbs and things because one big symptom of lupus is like your limbs hurt your joint your joints hurt she did like an overlook of my joints and one area that I have a lot of issues is with my hands the joints in my hands hurt a lot and when I'm doing like small like movements my fingers can lock up which is a symptom of lupus so she did notice when she was looking at my hands that she saw like some effects of what the lupus had done to my hands I forgot exactly how she explained it but she could tell that kind of the joints in my hand were breaking down a bit because of the inflammation and so we did the blood test I feel like <laughs> at first I used to be afraid of needles I used to be afraid of blood work but going through this whole thing of trying to figure out why I have lupus or if I had lupus or not I had so much blood taken from me that now when I get my blood taken the, the tech person is usually questioning me like are, are you good because you're not reacting like girl I get so much blood like just hurry up let's go <laughs> so we had the blood work taken the blood work came back and basically it was confirmed that I had lupus I had a lot of inflammation in my body luckily it did not look like any of my organs were being affected uh, specifically my kidney because that is something that they check often when you have lupus your uh, kidney function so my kidney was not affected it looked like I just had a lot of issues with pain in my joints fatigue brain fogginess brain fog and skin problems right which makes sense because again your skin is your biggest organ and lupus attacks your organs so 
I was diagnosed and I was put in, I was put on hydrochloroquine, which is the common drug that people with lupus are given and you take it on a daily basis and it's meant to control your inflammation because that's basically what <clears throat> goes on to attack your tissues or your organs. So I was put on that and I noticed that <laughs> Even though I was diagnosed, I was still kind of being questioned by my rheumatologist. So I would go see her and then I would question, I would tell her about my hands hurting and things of that nature. And she actually one time made a comment where she compared me to another patient of hers. And she said that this patient would complain about their hands hurting when they were braiding their daughter's hair. So just, off, you know, the context of that, I assumed that her other patient was also a black woman. And I felt like she was kind of, you know, lessening my symptoms or kind of not believing me because my hands hurt just when I'm sitting down. I don't have to be doing anything. I did not tell her I was braiding anyone's hair. My hands just be hurting, girl. So for her to say that, like, of course your hands hurt when you're braiding. Like, it just seems like she was kind of, she wasn't taking taking us seriously. She wasn't taking me seriously and she wasn't taking that other woman seriously, which, you know, I, I did not like that at all. And unfortunately, I would say that that is something that you may deal with on your journey to figure out if you have lupus or not. I found with having a chronic disease, it is very difficult to go into these appointments and tell doctors your symptoms and have them actually listen to you and do something about it. Like it is really a struggle and it can be really depressing or you know it can get you down because it's like you deal with this already on a daily basis and you're going to someone who's supposed to help you, the doctor, the specialist, whatever, and they're not listening. <laughs> Are they not doing anything? You feel like they're not doing anything to help you. It can be very, very frustrating. So some recommendations I would have just to kind of navigate around that and try to, you know, make that better is to keep notes of all your symptoms. Get you a little book like this. Go get auntie tabs, journals, or whatever, and write down your symptoms. Try to be as detailed as you can. You can write down the dates, whatever. Like, if you had joint pain one day, write it down, okay? Because then you can see how many times these symptoms are happening over a span of time, right? And you can see, you know, what is bothering you the most. Also, I would say, Get you an advocate, right? Get you someone who can, I know during COVID it may be a little difficult, but get you someone who can go to your doctor's appointments with you. Because I find, especially maybe if it's an older person, and I, or I hate to say it, I hate to say it, a man. <laughs> because it's sad but doctors tend to take men more seriously and they tend to take older patients more seriously as well so if you are a younger person and you happen to be a woman they may not listen to you as much as you would like so i would definitely recommend getting you an advocate that can go with you and can co-sign if it's the person that helps you know i don't want to call it your i mean if it's your caretaker you know that's even better or someone who is around when you're experiencing these symptoms I would say it would be great to take them with you so they can also speak to you know what you experience and also they can tell you if you're tripping or not when you feel like the doctor is not listening to you <laughs> okay and lastly i would say i definitely recommend for you to get a second opinion even if you're already you're told the first doctor you go to tells you you have lupus i would say still go get a second opinion from somewhere else um, there are a lot of autoimmune diseases or disorders lupus is not the only one um, and they also have like overlapping symptoms if you feel like one doctor is not working for you or is not conducive to what you're looking for you know it's nothing wrong with going to find another one truly truly and i think it's just better to get a second opinion because everyone doesn't have the same knowledge right i've been to many different doctors with the same ailment and you know usually they all tell me different things so i think it's actually beneficial especially when you have a chronic disease to go get a second opinion and just make sure you have all the knowledge you can and one more tip research 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 Doctors may get on your nerves when you go in there like, oh, I saw this online. I don't care. 
just know have a bit of knowledge about the common words that the doctors will use so information a and a and then you know have a better like an idea of your organs and you know pay attention to where you have pain at right that's definitely the things i would recommend i know it can be a difficult journey it was definitely difficult for me in my first couple of years i truly honestly was devastated devastated because in 2018 i was you know pretty young I mean, I'm still young, but I was even younger. So I just thought I had an end date on my life, which is not the case at all. You can still keep living. You can still keep going out in the sun. Just get your sunscreen, 45 SPF up and higher, okay? Get your cute little hats. You can still enjoy life. Do not think that this is the end for you. And if you have a loved one that has lupus, be understanding. Lupus is very... <laughs> It all over the place it's not dependable it's not predictable so you know I can make plans one day and the next day girl I'm not gonna be able to make it because my body is just not in the right space to go so just just be empathetic to those you know with lupus and also if you have lupus be empathetic to yourself don't beat yourself up girl if you can't do something one day you'll be able to do it you know one day all right don't be too hard on yourself that's it for today if you would like another video concerning lupus do let me know in the comments below if you have lupus girl i see you <laughs> we fight together all right it can seem like you know the fight we fight it alone sometimes but you're not it's a lot of us out here so keep going if you made it this far thank you for rocking with me and i'll see you in the next video bye that I have a